All right, my dudes. Hopefully the audio is good. We're going to go real quick. This is going to be a pretty quick stream, so let's get into this. And we are live. Let's bring this up some. If I can see this screen. It should be a lot louder. I was able to fix the microphone issues I had on the last live stream. And we can get into this. I actually need to zoom in a little. I got this kind of offset. But we'll go with it, my dudes. Soul Miner asking, will you be seeing up Miners Disrupt this year? No, guys. Uh, I wanted to go. Miners Disrupt reached out. Um, and it just, uh, the timing is not good for us to make it out there. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be there this year. I really wanted to go, though. All right, audio is good. Everybody can hear me. I know that was really low last time. So what we're going to be going through today, I'm going to get right into it. Um, so I built a tool that's customizable. This is version 1.0, so bear with me on this. Um, and we're going to look at connecting a few APIs to give you some real-time pricing to kind of be able to cost model. But what it is, is something that you individually, with your particular power company or your options, are going to have to put in some of the variables. What I've done is set this up for you guys to be able to put your variables in there and then get the down to the brass tacks. And the brass tacks on this is, it's easy to tell people, hey, just don't mind during peak times. Um, the problem with that is, and it went into building this tool, is it's not, there's a lot more nuance than that. And it's, a, it's harder to understand how much yield are you giving up when not mining in your non-peak times. Are you, in my, if, you, if you turn off for your full peak, because people have different peak pricing times, in this particular example, it's four hours every weekday, that's not much. Where and in some other areas of the country, it's like 12 hours. So that's kind of like a, a non-starter for some people. It's like, well, I'm not going to mine half the time, right? So you, it's good to understand what's the yield loss versus what your uh, savings are because sometimes it might not make sense and it might make sense to take a hedge on it and just keep mining. So what I want to show here, and I'm going to jump right into the tool. Um, and I call it a tool. It's, a, it's in a spreadsheet right now. I put it onto Google Sheets. I did it in Excel initially. Um, but it, it's, it is a tool as we start to add more features to it. It becomes a, uh, a model tool that you could do things with. So let's switch over real quick to the laptop and get into this. So you guys can see Twitter there. All right. So this link is in the description below. So you can bring this up. We already see some people have already kind of dumped into it here. And I'm going to just walk you through basic the way the tool set up and the way if you were to make a copy of this and you go in and you you do a file, you you make a version of it under your own Google Sheets, then you can then go in there and manipulate it and change it and all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line was to, I'm going to take you through how to break it down and then you can customize this for your own home solution. So right now I, I'm taking just one part of the country. This is up in Pennsylvania. This is one particular provider within Pennsylvania as an example. I'm also going to put a couple different uh, ones that we have uh, negotiated with in here as a drop down and a future update to where you could just hit the drop down and see different parts of the country and what their current power pricing is. But in this particular case, this the TOU is time of use. Time of use means just the time that you're using it, right? And then these are the different residential, uh, general service, primary distribution, and high tension. In this particular case, this is the way they handle it. In our case, uh, down here in Illinois, they have like high use, high in, uh, light industrial, heavy industrial. They have different rate classes. Uh, but that's essentially what this is. And you can see in peak in this particular part of the country, it costs you 22 cents to mine. Uh, during that time. Now, it didn't bring my labels over, but it would showed the times, but this was for four hours. So the breakdown of these rates that are across the top are over here on the left based on day and then the weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday. So they consider the weekend Saturday and Sunday. And then holiday has a different category. And holiday is only used on this particular case. It's 10 days a year uh, on their thing. And why that matters is during the holiday, this peak time is the holiday rate. 
right? So this is peak, off peak, and then this is weekend and holiday. It should say holiday here and holiday. Um, so I'm going to make a, a quick update to this. Um, so that's essentially what this is. So the, essentially the, the prices are the same and it's just on holidays on those 10 days. Like, so if you are scoping this out to see what the power cost would cost you in a year, you'd want to make sure those 10 days are counted for where you're not paying 22 cents per kilowatt hour on four hours on holidays. So that's what that one is there. And then what I did here is break down a weekly scope predicated on these, these uh, the peak, off-peak, off-peak uh, weekends, and then super off-peak, which is roughly 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. on the uh, on all the time. So it's all days. It's all seven days. So this breaks this down, and then what we've done is, is we considered a, a load factor... And the reason why I'm versioning this right now, version one does not have it to where you can change the load factor and it makes changes to these numbers. That's the next iteration. The next iteration, you could come in here and say, I'm going to be up 95% of the time. Because granted, you have um, various times that you have to fix things. And the reality is you're probably around more of a 90% to 95% uptime, even when you want to try to be 100%. But that will then, and it goes and calculates all of this change. Now, actually, I think when I copied the Google sheet, it actually didn't bring my formulas over. So I need to fix that. I just noticed this. You know what? I'll tell you what. Let's do this. We're going to look at the Excel sheet right now because it has the formulas in it. And I will fix the formulas in the Google sheet for you guys. Um, so when I copied this over, it didn't bring the formulas, unfortunately. But so here's the formulas. So on at least the live stream, you can see if you wanted to fix it ahead of me, um, the formulas are in the Google sheet and we can uh, get those fixed in, the, in uh, sorry, the formulas will be fixed in the Google sheet. But here is the way the formulas work. Um, and you can see on each of these. So I'm just going to kind of click through each of the things that we guys have the formulas that are in here and you could slow down the video and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but a bottom line, what we're trying to track is what's the most optimal time? What we're trying to get to is these numbers here, and then what's the net change over, let's say, a monthly thing. So, like the bottom line up front on something like this is, how much yield am I giving up if I do not run on peak time? And for that yield, what's my savings, right? So, in this case, under a full week, as an example. And per kilowatt hour, I'm essentially giving up 12, almost 12% of my yield, and I'm getting 40% in total cost savings, right? That's a huge difference, okay? So I wanted to break out for you guys a couple examples here, which if you take a, a six-card RX 480 rig running roughly around 950 watts, this is actually a little lower than that, but... Let's just say you're unoptimized and you're running at 950 watts on that machine. This is your kilowatt hour per rate. Uh, uh, this is how many kilowatt hours you're going to use in a day. If you look at your, your total uh, weekday cost at 100% peak and then your, your non-peak and then your weekends, okay? You're essentially looking at on a full, uh, on a full month, like let's just take the, this is the full week. This is the difference in a week. If you, if you don't uh, count in those four hours, you're dropping from $26 to $15 in power cost. In a month, you're dropping from $104 in power cost down to $62, a 40% savings in cost for only 12% loss in, in hash rate. Um, same thing on a, on a S19J Pro using about 3,050 watts. You can see all the numbers here too. I'm, I'm just clicking on the formulas since the Google sheet doesn't have the formulas yet. Um, Cause I just literally copied and pasted this in and it did not carry these formulas over. Um, and for people that are con uh, curious on the calculations about why it's why 10 cents is because I'm not doing it from a full cent standpoint. I had to move the decibel place over one. So the reality is, is uh, a S19 J pro at this cost factoring with those four hours being peak and the 14 hours being off peak and then six hours being super off peak per day. And you sum those up. Um, it costs you about $13 a day to run 
an S19 right now. And that's very accurate for a lot of people around that 12 cents per kilowatt time, you know, costing. It's about $13.42 a day to run. Um, if you just focus that on running 100% and just focus on those other, those other two costs, um, you, you significantly drop it. So if we look at the, if we look at a full uh, running a full week peak on that cost, you'd be paying eighty three dollars on an S nineteen per week. You would drop it to fifty bucks on on a twenty eight day month. And the reason why there, I did twenty eight days here is because I did I did the calculation by week, and then I times it by four. Okay, and that's that's twenty eight days. the The reality is for me to do this accurately. Um, uh, to account for months that have 30 days or 31 days, I need to actually import the calendar data because some of those days are going to fall on weekends. So I can't just assume that I'm going to have those extra two days at peak because, you know, the 30th and the 31st could fall on a weekend. So I need to import. That's one of the updates that I need to make on version two of this. So this is version one. And that way you'll have at least an accurate calendar based on, and now you can choose some selectors at the top, which would be like what month and year are we looking at? So then we can figure it, uh, like going back to this S19J Pro, you're looking at a 28 day run on that. It will cost you $334. And people that are running the S19J Pro, um, are paying that cost right now. They're they're paying close to three hundred thirty dollars a month. Um, you can, in this particular case, if your power company has different pricing for peak versus non peak, this is the difference in savings you could have: twelve percent loss in yield, forty percent drop in cost. So that's the full walkthrough. You can see some of the other. Uh, these are just the basic calculations to get you know uh, that these are using here. Uh, how many days and hours and weeks and a month, that kind of thing to make sure that we're, we're checked. And then I have this model tab that we haven't started working on yet, which is going to be version two, but that's essentially it. So I'm going to switch back over here and we'll have a quick conversation and then we'll wrap this one up. So I wanted to make it a really quick one. So obviously I need to fix the Google sheet, which I will do on this. On, uh, after this video, I can quickly make those, uh, those changes. Also, I'll, I'll, save this Excel file, I'll upload it and I'll share it. That way, like right after this video, you guys could use the Excel sheet if you want until the Google sheet is fixed. But I wanted to make sure it's really easy to do a video and explain to people that if you don't mine at off peak or if you mine only on off peak, you're going to save money. But I think the numbers tell the story a much better way. And it's different. It's different for each person because your power company may have different ranges of time on peak versus off peak. In this particular case, uh, in Pennsylvania, it's, uh, they only run peak for four hours. So it's, it's not a huge uh, impact. It's a 12% impact on your hash rate uh, for that huge savings. Um, and when we were doing this, this write up here, it's 50% of the peak rate. So they probably went in there and said, I want to make sure the pricing for peak was half of the total cost. And since that's only four hours, it shot that price difference from five cents to 22 cents to make it 50% of the cost. So I know these are a lot of numbers and there's percentages and stuff in there. And I know there is a huge amount of nuance to get this right. And I mean, yesterday, literally I spent a couple hours on getting this fixed and right uh, for that we could have a tool that started for you guys. Some people have fixed pricing for 24 hours. I see somebody, this doesn't count for people that have 24 hour fixed pricing. That is true. Uh, that has not, like if you have fixed pricing that's stuck at a certain cost and price, um, that's, this will, this will not help for you. Um, this is targeted to people that have variable pricing, which happens a lot in the U.S. Um, Roland saying, P Pennsylvania, I thought your BBT was in St. Louis. I am near the St. Louis area, yes. But we work with clients all over the country and world um, helping. So part of, you, know, you guys see the videos and stuff we do here, but we actually, BBT is a business. And we have, we help other miners. We help 
small and large farms, people reach out to us and try to help figure out the most optimal setup for their situation. And that's other consulting work that we do. But what I like to do anytime I'm consulting with people is I like to make sure as part of that is we're making source information for people, especially for finding breakthroughs on different opportunities. Because at the end of the day, while we all compete, quote unquote, for hash rate and yield, the more participants in this space makes that network more secure and makes it have a lot more size. And then other investments and people come into this space because they're like, you know what? Mining's not for me. Power cost doesn't make sense for me. However, I can go in this aspect of it and maybe make some kind of service in the space. Uh, you know, if it's a utility or a service that's coming in to work in this space, uh, the more miners, the larger infrastructure structure, you know, and the more individuals that are taking the time to find out if they can participate by looking at their power rates and doing the math here to figure out like, you know what, I can't do 24 seven, but I can do it 18 hours a day. And if I do it 18 hours a day and I'm giving up, you know, 20% of my, my yield, I'm going to be able to save, you know, 50, 60% on some cases. Some other ones that we're looking at have a little even better deal than this, where it shoots to like 34 cents during high peak. And that's recent because of the power cost going up. So in, under high demand periods, they just they just moon it and make it, you know, 30, 40 cents. And people are looking at their bill going, what the hell? And it's during those peak times, their prices has, has adjusted. So being aware... That's the first case on any mining. I've always told people for years of doing this, it all is all an individual decision. Your core piece that you need to know is what your operations expense is going to be when it comes to your power costs. And understanding on how to optimize your setup is critical in this space to be able to be sustained during the time. Because what happens is people look at this and they have to power down because Bitcoin's price comes down. And then reality, in a minimum set, in that example, the super off peak for six hours every day it's three cents per kilowatt now this isn't the full story too i want to clarify this is the resident this is the power rate there is distribution there's sometimes transmission costs and there's taxes right so the all-in rates are a little more than this but understanding the all those all-in rates are 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 calculated off your total energy use rates right so so there's like a fixed basic cost that's not moving the moving rate is your energy rate. So that's, that's, you're going to have, it's like you go buy something, you always have 7% tax or something. It's just, it's just what it is. I can't help you with that. That's just your local area. But what we can help is to make sure that if three cents power makes you where you can turn on your machine, then you can turn it on for those six hours at a time every day and you get still continue to get yield. Granted, it's not, you look at your ROI, you look at all that kind of stuff and it doesn't make sense, but you can still participate. And that's the critical piece of that. And that's what I'm trying to do with a tool like this to help you guys out. So um, hopefully this was a good one and a quick one for you guys. I wasn't trying to make this one really long for people could come in, see it 20 minutes and then out. Uh, we do have the other, you guys, if you're following us on Twitter, you should be following us on Twitter. Later this afternoon, we're going to be doing some um, reviews on doing the Starlink piece with uh, a decentralized, you know, we're do, doing a, like a whole decentralized setup with a generator. It's going to be cool. So you guys will see some of the pictures and videos from that. And then that comes together in a uh, video. Uh, but back to back videos and live streams, hopefully you guys have been enjoying some of this. It's been a minute since I've had a couple back to back videos, but I will catch you guys on the next one. I know that this was